So, do we have any father-son gamers out there? A few? <laughs> what about any just normal gamers? All right, all right. So we must be an E3 then. All right. <laughs> That's what my dad and I like to do. We prefer the games where you battle as allies instead of against each other, partially because my dad's pretty good at video games. But during my sixth grade year, these games became my ally in my battle against cancer. It was during this year that I was given a 2% chance survival when I was diagnosed with AML leukemia. AML leukemia is a fast and wide-spreading form of leukemia. The type I had was a meaner, more aggressive type, requiring intense chemotherapy, followed by a bone marrow transplant, and then 100 days of isolation. It was during this time that I discovered the healing power of video games, how they can provide a relief from pain, provide a sense of community, and also be a bridge back to normalcy. Now, I'd like to share with you my experiences on the healing power of video games and how they helped me beat cancer. I remember at the start of my transplant, I was like Pinocchio, except I had tubes to pull me down, tubes that were branching out from my arms and chest and carrying my new medication and new cells into my body. At the start, I couldn't sleep because of nausea, so my dad flipped on the video game Ultimate Alliance. The tubes required me to hold the controller more like this, but nonetheless, as a father-son team, we battled the bad guys and defeated them and saved the world. And when we were done, we turned it off, and within seconds, I was out cold. Even though I had been given enough medication to put an elf into sleep, it wasn't until after the medication or until after the video games that I slept. After my transplant, I had to be in 100 days of isolation because my body was that of a newborn infant, which meant I had to get all my baby shots over again. Now I know why babies hate the doctor. <laughs> Those shots really hurt. But that wasn't the worst of it because like a newborn infant, I couldn't be around other kids. So I developed an 18-level video game I called PAC, Play Against Cancer. The video game is a maze-style game, similar to Pac-Man. As you travel through the maze, you blast the green Pac-Man ghosts that represent cancer cells. When you get to the end of the maze, it displays the message, you just beat cancer. As I was getting around to finishing the game, it was about Christmas time. Have you ever been in a place you don't want to be on Christmas Eve? I had to be in the hospital getting a blood transfusion on Christmas Eve, and it wasn't fun. So the following year, my family and I went down to the hospital. My parents and sister wore the big elf hats with the big pointy ears, and I wore a huge red velvet Santa sombrero. And we delivered the games, along with goodie bags filled with candy and powder balls to the kids in the hospital. The little kids' faces lit up at the sight of candy, and the older kids ran off to go find a computer to play the game on. And one of the patients even sent her dad out to have me autograph the game. The following year, we did the same thing, delivering even more games I had made. But this year, I wore a scarf that I had knitted. At the end of handing out all the games, I gave the scarf to the child life specialist. I told her to give it to one specific patient whose attitude towards surviving and will to keep fighting had touched me that year. I'll never forget the girl who received my scarf. She reminds me of the kids we see in those commercials. The commercials portray well what kids like her and I go through because a picture is worth a thousand words. But the words that it doesn't share is how cancer treatment can rip you away from the world that you know. The world of hanging out with friends is gone. My friends, they wouldn't look me in the eye. They're too focused on the tubes that are hanging out from my sleeve and my hair that's missing. By the time I get to the hospital, I'm too afraid to talk to anyone for the fear that they're not gonna wanna talk to me. Because my friends, 
they couldn't hold up a conversation with me. But you can't blame them. They're just too focused on saying the wrong thing. So they limit their responses to as short of words as possible. By the time I got to the hospital, I was afraid. To my surprise, I was wrong about the fact that they're gonna want, not going to want to talk to you. During my first few days of treatment, I met two kids who shared the same love of video games. As we began talking, the world of cancer melted away. I now had two friends who I could go out and talk to, between schoolwork, of course, and hang out with. With them, my treatment felt shorter. When I talked to them, cancer became irrelevant. Video games can create what's called a bifrost. A bifrost is a mythological bridge between two worlds and was used in the superhero movie Thor. For me, it connects the normal world to the cancer world. In the future, I hope to create even more bifrosts, ones that are more stable than one Thor, and allow kids not only to travel into the world of cancer, but also back out, which is a lot harder to do. In order to do this, I created a nonprofit organization called The Survivor Games. The purpose of these Survivor Games is to bring the healing power of video games to the cancer community using a social network made out of cancer patients, non-cancer patients, and video game developers. Video games, both new and old, as well as video games that are made for cancer patients that appeal to everyone, will be the foundation for this social network. It takes a lot of people to build up a social network. So I invite all of you to join me at thesurvivorgames.com to find out how you can help. Because any one of us can be ripped away from the world that we know. But through the healing power of video games, we can be that relief from pain, that sense of community, and we can be that bridge back to normalcy. And that is the magic of the healing power of video games. Thank you.